Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Ross here with another Learning with Line 6. Um, and we're going to do a cover band preset today uh, on Pod Go. So we'll get the awkward bit out of the way. I'll make sure that I've got everything turned on so I don't look too foolish. Um, make sure all the sound's okay. So this is my voice, as always. It isn't great, but it's all that I've got. And here's the guitar. <laughs> Hopefully the levels are okay. I'll fill for a minute um, and one of you fine people watching can tell me that everything's hunky-dory or something needs to come up or down. So, cover bands. Um, sounded good. Cheers, Jake. Uh, Marvellous. Beautiful. Uh, so, cover bands. Tons of you um, and me play in cover bands. So, we go out, usually on a weekend, various different venues and we play lots of other people's music um, some of us make a living from that some of us do it for fun uh, but normally you would have to cover a ton of sounds um, anything from kind of funk um, blues R&B rock occasionally metal if you're lucky or unlucky um, Isaka says, I don't speak English. I am so sorry. I only speak English. So, um, apologies. Um, my theory on this is generally the only people that are ever going to pick apart your tone and say, oh, the that delay setting or that gain structure isn't correctly are, are the guitar players. Um, so I just try and get somewhere close. Now, my theory with any kind of switching is I try and do everything as much as I can within one preset. Uh, the reason for that is essentially leveling. So if I can get all of the sounds or the vast majority of the sounds I need from one preset, all I have to do when I get to the gig is just get an overall level and maybe tweak a couple of things for the room. Sometimes it's louder, sometimes it's quieter. And that might skew a few things out. Um, if I've got one preset, I'm golden. If I've got 20 presets or a preset per song, um, leveling all of those in what is occasionally a very short sound check or no sound check at all can be problematic. And then you write in volumes and it's a pain. So that's why I like to use one preset. Um, and I can turn a bunch of things on and off within that preset. And it just makes my life a little bit easier. Um, and I'll use different guitars or playing dynamics to, to make it work. And like I said, general Joe public don't know the difference. And th that's kind of what we're going to go. I'm, I'll try and do some playing examples. I've been kind of thinking in my head, oh, what do I play and who do I play it with? Um, I play with a ton of different singers, bunch of different styles, and I generally use one preset unless I need some kind of special effect. So I'll take you through what I've got going with Pod Go, um, and kind of a little kind of get out of jail free card, which does involve buying a little extra tool. Um, uh, Vaughn says, try to do the same. It's it's a cool way to do it. Um, Leandro, uh, IR, the, the built-in cab on this, so nice and simple, everything within this preset, which I will uh, put a link to uh, the custom tone uh, uh, after this is finished. Everything is just within Podgo. Happy days. Uh, so I guess the first point of call is what kind of stuff are you doing um, if you're literally just a funk covers band? You're probably only going to need a couple of sounds anyway. So this is a moot point. If um, you're playing in like a wedding band or you're playing with a bunch of different people, yeah, you're probably going to need to go from funk or clean R&B, maybe even a jazzy thing, uh, sort of George Benson style through to Foo Fighters and everything in between. Um, and like I said, that's what I've tried to capture here. So your first thing is finding the right amps and pedals. So I'll take you through what I've got. And this, again, this works for me. I'll upload the tone or the links to the tone. You can download it, have a play around. It's a starting point. You're going to play different to me, etc., etc. All the uh, the normal uh, the normal caveats. So this is what we've got going on. 
Um, so I've done a bunch of live streams talking about the Cali Texas Channel 1 or Channel 2, um, how that's my general go-to amp. Um, um, so that's what I've used here. And I've actually used Channel 2. Um, I did do a deep dive not that long ago on this particular amp model, Channel 1 and Channel 2, and you just see how versatile it is. I've used Channel 2 because I want this particular preset to go from super clean to pretty high gain um, and everything in between. So I've done that. Uh, you'll notice um, uh, the numbers are in white in brackets, which means I'm utilizing snapshots. So we'll talk about that shortly as well. The cab, 212 in state, it's my general go-to cab. Uh, again, you'll see the mic uh, is in white. I'm using snapshots to change that. Um, and that is pretty much the core sound. Um, just the amp and cab and we're golden. I've got a wire in there. I've chosen the Weeper just because why not? Um, I've got a phase 90. Uh, I've got the Air Apparent. Again, I've done a deep dive on this. Why it's my favorite pedal, uh, the actual kind of real pedal itself and the model. It just does a ton of different things. Uh, and again, you'll see the snapshots. Uh, we're changing that per snapshot as well. Um, we've got a chorus, that's just set stock. You can obviously do more with that. So for certain snapshots, have it doing a rotary, for example. Uh, volume pedal, because fun. Uh, I've got the EQ just set. You can do various things with this. I've got it set to just give me um, a darker tone generally, so I can go from kind of super sparkly clean to jazz and then some delay. So you will hear a little bit of reverb. So I'm using uh, Helix Rack as my audio interface. That's what you're hearing this through. Um, and I've just added a little bit of reverb post as you would, because essentially I ran out of blocks. You're probably not gonna hear reverb unless it's a big ambient thing live anyway with drums and keys and everything going. Um, but out front, you maybe add some reverb on the desk. That's kind of where I've gone with that. So let's r run through the core sounds that I've got here. Um, guitar, by the way, um, and I'll probably change this out uh, in a little while. Guitar, trusty Yamaha Pacifica 612V. Uh, marvelous, totally stock other than the pickups, which are bare knuckle, true grit. So kind of low output deal, um, which will give you some idea of what you're going to be uh, playing at if you download this and have a plate yourself. So clean tone. So snapshot one is my clean tone, kind of all purpose. <laughs> Just nice, straight air, clean sound. Um, that, remember, is technically the drive channel of the Cali Texas uh, amp model. Uh, channel B, if I, you'll see kind of, I've changed the settings um, through snapshots. And if we go to uh, the cab, you'll see I've switched to the 57. So on the clean channel uh, or the clean sound, it's the 47 condenser on this. It's the 57. That's just going to shave a load of low end off. And what I'm trying to do is get that kind of class A voxy sort of vibe. It's a two quite different sound. So two very different sounds, just changing the amp settings and the mic setting, uh, snapshot three. Uh, that's kind of more of a classic British stack kind of um, going for the Marshall-y thing, but just a good old school crunch. <laughs> And then snapshot four is just big, heavy. Uh, 
case you missed it, on um, Snapshot 3 for the crunch. I've gone with the 7 dynamic, uh, and then the 421 kind of scoop out some mids, add a bit of sizzle uh, on the higher gain stuff. <laughs> show you the amp settings as well uh, so that's on the kind of more voxy sort of vibe and then that kind of more British current and then there we are So I've done a similar thing um, like this patch before, which was just getting as many different tones as I could uh, out one thing. And like I said earlier, that's the that's the goal with this. Just uh, I'm limited with PodGo on the blocks and what blocks I can do uh, what I want with, but I'm not limited with snapshots. So I can be very picky about the actual models that I'm using and use snapshots to do the rest so if we just kind of go into stonebox mode which i don't have a camera set up so you can't see um but you'll see things coming on um, and going on the screen um so just within this clean sound i can do a bunch of different things so i'm actually going to turn that up just a little bit <laughs> So all-purpose clean sound, I can put the phaser on there and you just instant kind of... That kind of deal, uh, put some chorus on. I mean, ton of different, uh, ton of different track. Add some delay onto that and actually just tap the tempo real quick get kind of a slap back and it's it's your purple rain yes i know i played it wrong and in the wrong key um that's how we play it. We, you know, we, we're not uh, we're not perfectionists. Um, with the kind of graphic, you see uh, the settings there. What that's doing is just kind of beefing everything up slightly. And I can take a single coil um, uh, neck pickup into kind of jazzy territory. So with that. <laughs> Then the air apparent just kind of gives you kind of a little bit of hair, um, but really nice for kind of a clean solo. Add in some dynamics, or if you are brave and you uh, you get to play this sort of stuff. Um, it does that sort of thing real well. Um, so a bunch of different sounds uh, just out of that first snapshot. Um, I really like snapshot two because this is kind of an uh, this does a bunch of different things for me. So this is your kind of um, Americana y on the edge of breakup, like I say, going for the kind of class A uh, British thing. <laughs> Da 
that sort of stuff. But something we all know and love, uh, put the delay on. So you'll see um, what I've got going on here is I've got quarter notes there and the mix at 40%. But going over here, you'll see I've got foot switch seven. So I have added an external expression pedal. Um, I'm using the Mission uh, TT2. So it is a dual one. I'm only using one of the sides at the moment, but I've set this up. So when I press that button, that goes to dotted eight notes um, and the mix comes up and get the tempo right, hopefully. That sort of thing. With the regular quarter notes, just yeah, good old. So that's kind of the little extra add-on bit. It just means you can get even more out of um, out of less. Um, now, what I've done with the air apparent in this, you'll see the gain is cranked up, and I've got the the tone of the presence up, and what I'm going for there. Uh, now, this will give you a clue. I'm going to switch to a sixpence because that's really important. Um, put the air apparent and the chorus on and go for the kind of out of phase position too. And do the good old school volume, uh, guitar on the volume down trick. recognize that kind of sound and it, it, I think that's a pretty decent kind of representation in a mix who's gonna know yeah you can get all that So that's what I'm kind of going for with that. Um, yeah, you can absolutely add the calligraphic. Uh, with the dirt. A lot of this preset is just kind of varying levels of filth. Um, I probably wouldn't use the phase 90 on this personally, but it's in there if you so desire. Snapshot 3, good old school rock and roll. With the air apparent, it's just a big old kind of that very mid bump solo boost. And it's got that kind of very kind of mid, um, high mid thing going on. Um, just yeah, I could use that all day and it cleans up great. Uh, with the gain and the caddy. That's where we're going with that. Um, and then Snapshot 4, this is just, I would probably tend to use this um, for for lead, predominantly. Because, I mean, that's, that's a tone that you're probably not going to get to use very often in a Whitney Houston song. Yeah? No? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know. Less 
likely to play that. But um, certainly that. <laughs> Kind of heavy, but uh, it's got some crispiness. Great for lead. Put the delay on. Even more gain with the air apparent. Phase 90, obviously. Etc. Etc. Et um, and and that's kind of it. Uh, using your playing dynamics, uh, digging in, using different guitars. Um, I can absolutely swap a guitar out real quick um, and show you. So. Oh, put you down there and try not to smash it in the uh, in the process uh, so ooh, ooh, got it. we'll zoom in on this it's beautiful it's beautiful um, Revstar this is a beautiful RS 502T um, sorry it's the old model RSS 02T there you go <laughs> So this is kind of a little bit higher output than the Pacifica that I've got. So if I go to uh, that kind of more uh, kind of chimey thing. Uh, and pull the mid boost on. Yeah, that sort of thing. If any of my friends are watching, don't tell the story about that uh, when we played that song. Um, but yeah, you can totally kind of dig in and get more out of it, or like I said, draw your volume back. This has got a really nice, uh, really nice setting in position two, uh, which absolutely does the Brian A thing. Does that really well. I digress. Um, I just thought what I could use Snapshot 4.4. Um, it's the thing. Someone says, can I play a song? What do I play? Uh, but that. <laughs> With the volume down, clean it up a little bit. So on and so forth. Um, so you get the idea. Um, hopefully you see the point of this. The goal is not do too much switching, not do too much tap dancing. That's kind of the beauty of snapshots. Um, like I said earlier, in case you missed it, the reason I want to do everything out of one preset, unless it's something super, super special effect um, or a particular amp model that just absolutely has to be the sound, is all down to, I mean, me being lazy, um, leveling different venues, different... Um, excitement factors, uh, when you start kind of getting louder or quieter, preset levels will change. And if I can level one preset out, it's going to save me a load of time, especially if there's no sound check. Um, and I think certainly for what I do, and like I say, I can be playing um, Whitney Houston stuff one second, George Benson the next, and then Foo Fighters or Free or whatever. So it, it, it's more about the kind of dry 
uh, guitar sounds, the different gain structures, but chorus and phaser for me will cover a massive amount of ground for general kind of pop and rock music. If I need a tremolo, I can absolutely just scoot to a different preset, or it's probably as quick to just go in and change that model to a tremolo um, and do it that way. But hopefully what you can see, and again, if you're new to snapshots, um, that shows you the power. And something I've talked about at length before is how much difference the mic makes uh, to the general sound, because the, the mics on each one is add, are adding so much to the sound uh, of, of each snapshot. It's ridiculous. So there we go. I'll post the link to the preset. Hopefully you found this a little bit useful. Um, like I said, this is just a starting point. You can absolutely uh, do a lot of this with a different amp model. Personally, I favor the Cali Texas just because I know the amp. Uh, inside out it's an amp that i used for 10 years or so um i know how it responds to pedals i know what i can get out of it and i know what to do basically but you can use the brit plexi bright that's a really great one the us princess is another good one for going super clean to kind of quite crunchy um and then drive pedal of choice it's entirely up to you but it just kind of goes to show that you can get a hell of a lot out of not a lot um, using snapshots and some choice effects. So thank you so much for tuning in. I um, hope everyone is staying safe and well and playing loads of guitar. Uh, I'm going to stop this. Uh, new questions. No, we're good. Um, oh, no, I missed one. Apologies. Boxster says, as a side question, what is the DSP, meaning processing power, difference between podgo um versus hx stump xl <coughs> excuse me numbers wise and i just hit the mic apologies if i blew anyone's ears out um numbers wise i honestly couldn't tell you that's way too technical for my tiny brain to comprehend i'm sure someone has done something somewhere obviously hx stump and stump xl you can do a lot more with uh, multiple amps and uh, different blocks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, multiple paths, uh, yada yada. But as far as the actual, um, if there's a difference numbers-wise in processing, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I'm afraid I'm not that smart. Um, Daniel says, "Great, I always change settings, add new presets, and just never ends." Yeah, sing it. Uh, we'll follow your advice here and do uh, four presets with snapshots each, and keeping it simple. Um, do it. Try it. It might not work for you. This, like I said earlier, this all works for me covering a ton of different stuff. I have a gig coming up tomorrow and we're doing literally Rihanna and Leanne Rhymes to Journey um, and a bunch of stuff in between. So I have to get kind of quite heavy and I have to go super clean and funky um, and get some pseudo kind of acoustic sounds. And whilst I'm using Helix, the concept is exactly the same, just doing a bunch of stuff within one preset. And Daniel also says, what's my thought on the Mandarin amps? Um, I like them. I haven't spent a ton of time with them, um, but I've heard people kind of using them and playing them. They sound awesome. I just haven't got deep into them yet. But again, yeah, you can you can get a ton of different tones out of those amps. So don't be afraid to go to extreme settings um, with some of the amp models because you know you never you never know what you might find. Uh, so there we go. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for watching. We're going to carry on with these same time, same place next week, and uh, take care of yourselves. Thank you for watching. Take care.